Happy Tuesday, everyone. Uh, welcome to Tuesdays at Lunch with Dr. Blum. I'm Susan Blum, and I'm really happy to be here again this week to uh, talk to you about all sorts of great, interesting functional medicine topics. And um, so, along those lines, I, as we wait for people to join, you know, it takes a few minutes for everyone to notice that I'm up and running, and uh, people will slowly be joining us. And again, to remind those of you who might not have been doing this with me every week, for the first 15 minutes, I'm going to chat about a topic, and um, and then I'll open up the uh, floor for questions, and I'll just answer questions for the last 15 minutes, so that together we'll be a total of uh, 30 minutes together. Um, so today, and, and for men, some of you who have been watching this uh, our conversation for the past couple of weeks, We've been doing a lot of discussion about the gut, which is really such a an important and um, uh, time timely topic. Uh, it's all over the news. It's all over the internet. Every week, the New York Times uh, magazine section seems to have something on the gut microbiome, and so it's on everybody's minds because it seems that the gut bacteria uh, are the drivers for a lot of for wellness and the drivers for disease and. So having a healthy gut is so, so important. Uh, I, in the past two weeks, or two, the last week and the week before, I really have been talking about food. Because at the end of the day, food is actually the number one greatest influence on your gut. On your gut health, the lining, as well as the gut bacteria. And so we spent a lot of time on that. And I promised everyone last week that I would move on to... Um, uh, talk about herbs and supplements for healing the gut. And so that's what we're going to focus on today. What I do want to share, though, as I've been mulling over what to talk about today, and actually I have a few supplements to share and to talk about and answer questions about because there's so much confusion and people are out there sort of peddling their supplements. And, and I do want to share a couple of main points that are really important to me. Um, this past weekend, I spent at the Personalized Lifestyle Medicine Institute Conference. I flew to Phoenix to be with some of my great buddies um, that I've grown up with in functional medicine. And, of course, this is the, uh, the summit the, or the conference every week that's hosted by Jeffrey Bland, who is really the founder of functional medicine. Anyone working in this field knows who he is, and um, for the first you know, up until about three or four years ago. So the first 20 years, he really was sort of the moving force. He founded the Institute and, and the field, really. And he's left and sort of retired off into, I wouldn't call him retired in any way, but he the conference, the annual functional medicine conference, for those of you who have had the privilege of going, is become, because functional medicine has grabbed on and taken hold and, and doctors are, are going there in, in, in hundreds of um, you know, at a time, to the conference every year, the conference functional medicine has turned into a real, like, training place, you know, how to. Here, here you go, those of you in conventional medicine, here you go, here's how to learn how to practice functional medicine, and it's really become such a great place to learn how to practice, to learn about it, to learn how to practice, and the, the, the lectures and the, the breakout sessions are all very geared for training, you know, for helping you get started. Um, in the old days, when I used to go to functional medicine conferences, um, I did my training in 2001. I went to my first applying functional medicine and clinical practice training. Those conferences were all curated by Jeffrey Bland, and they were all meaning he would get up every morning and um, give a recap of what happened the day before. But we had scientists from all over the world giving their cutting-edge research. That's sort of his thing. You know, he's really in the research. He knows what the latest is, and he's the one who really brought the gut microbiome to our attention back in 2000, the year 2000, right, you know, in the, when I was beginning. That's what the discussion was, and so that's why functional medicine is so far ahead of the curve, and that's actually why my colleagues and myself and someone like me who's been practicing for 15 years knows knows how to heal the gut. And so it's all that experience that I want to share and that I've been sharing and taking care of people all these years um, at Blum Center for Health and online with our digital programs. But what I wanted to share with you today is what got me thinking. I really, um, I really started thinking this weekend about 
you know, this whole idea of all those programs out there, you know, everybody has their jump start, you know, kick start, quick fix, you know, and the books with the quick fixes and two weeks to heal your gut and, you know, 10 day detox as if that's going to unload your body of all the toxins it has in 10 days. And I think that in some ways, my, my colleagues and, and the, I, and I really, I, I say this in a good way, like in some ways when I started, it was the same thing. We have so much enthusiasm for the power of how this helps people feel better. And we spend so much time and, and with the advent of the internet and, the, and, and some of the celebrity sort of internet people running these quick fix programs. I think people have gotten a little bit um, confused about, you know, where to go, you know, what happens next. And that's really become the theme of my, I'm writing, I'm finishing my book this week, actually starting next Tuesday. I'll be in the office on Tuesdays. Right now I'm still home because I, my deadline's October 31st and I wrote a book on arthritis, an, an inflammatory disease, inflammatory arthritis as well as osteoarthritis, right? But both of them are joint pain, right? So I wrote a book on arthritis, joint pain. And what I've learned after 15 years is that it's we all and I do it you have the quick start the jump start help people feel better quickly and those are the elimination diets and those are the sort of quick you know some herbals and gut cleanses and we do that's really important but what I am really excited to talk about is this whole idea of finishing what you start listen to that finish what you start there are amazing people out there that can quick start you. That can You can do a 10-day this, a 30-day this, a 15-day this. But I have people I've been working with for year after year after year. That's my experience. That's what I bring to the table. You know, and it's not, you can't just rest on, you can't just think that you're going to do a quick fix for somebody or you're going to jump start them and they will feel better. I guarantee you will feel better. And I, I have two week jump start diet and, and then a two, you know, we do one or two month gut cleanses and you will feel better. But what happens a year later and two years later? You know, when you're in practice working with people for as many years as I have, most of my people I've had a long time. And I've gotten to see what comes next. And we need to work with people to finish what we start. And so it's not enough just to do this quick fix and, uh, or the jump start. And I, I want to talk about that today. And I want to help you learn a little bit about what that means. Okay, everyone with me? All right, good. So, um, and I'll, I'll answer questions um, soon. I see some questions are coming in, but I will come back to that. Um, because I just wanted to say a little bit more about what I mean by that. Um, it turns out, especially when it comes to the gut microbiome, there is uh, gut bacteria, you know, all these lent words we use for it. Um, we, we Each of us has something called an enterotype which means it's sort of like your body type. Let's say you have a body type. Some people are pear-shaped. Some people are, um, you know, whatever the other shapes are for the body. <laughs> you know, but we all have, we have a blood type, and we all have these types. And it turns out that researchers have been classifying people into sort of patterns of their gut flora, and they're, they're looking at these things called an enterotype, which means that you have a certain pattern of your gut flora. Your body really wants to keep going back to that old pattern. So you might do a gut reboot and you do like a cleanse, which I love, you know, and I, I offer those, right? I have a Heal My Gut program. It's a 10-day and a 30-day gut reboot with, you know, with the herbs, which we'll talk about in a minute, that clean out the bacteria, you know, kill them, reduce the bad stuff, you know, the yeast and the bacteria. You need to do that because you have to get the weeds out of the garden. But what comes next, right? And... What and and it and so because you'll change your enterotype temporarily, and actually the in, the studies are really really fascinating that your gut bacteria will change in a day or even hours after you change your food. It keeps changing. So you change from a vegetarian diet to a, to a um, an animal based diet, and your flora will change within a couple of days. The whole the whole enterotype looks different, and so. If you, though, go back to your old ways, your, your bacteria will go back to your old ways as well. So listen to that. You can do all these temporary quick fixes to jumpstart things, and, and that's important, and I do that with people, and I believe very strongly you need that. But you need to finish what you start. And what that means is you need a next step in your program that's going to help you 
um, continue to maintain those changes for those changes to go deeper. You know, in my work with autoimmune disease and inflammatory arthritis, which is what's in my head because I'm, I'm writing the book, I'm actually just finishing my chapter on traumatic stress. And, and, and I'm just always so, when I'm reviewing, I'm telling a lot of people's stories, you know, in the book and, um, and my stories. You know, and my experience working with the Center for Mind-Body Medicine, working with trauma and teaching people, you know, techniques and mind-body techniques to work with trauma and help them reduce the effects of the trauma in their body. Um, I'm always reminded about the physical effects of stress and the physical effects of trauma. And it, it, there's huge, huge effects on the gut. You know, if you, if you think about tipping tense and holding it in and you feel just really um, stressed out, you know, you can feel it, the gut. People, some people will spend, you know, when they get stressed, they they have loose stool and they're in the bathroom. I mean, most people will read, readily shake their head and say, yeah, 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 I know it affects my gut. And so for, that's just an example of the finish what you start. We need to work on staying with a certain kind of di with a diet, with food, continuing to eat food for the rest of your life. That's going, there are permanent changes that you have to make. And working with, stress and learning tools to manage that as well. But what I wanted to say about um, what I've learned about finishing what you start and staying with a program otherwise and my arthritis patients is that I'm always reminded of several people in, that always pop into my head who do well, do well, do well and the, the pain is going down and we're getting off medication and then they go back to, you know, the summer's over, let's say it's, I have one person that comes to mind who's a teacher and in the summer she does great. And she has no pain, and she can go do all her activity, and then she goes back to school in September and starts teaching, and the pain comes, her, her whole, all her symptoms come back again. Uh, and not as bad as when we started, right? So, but it's sort of like two steps forward and a step back. And so for her to finish what she starts and really have permanent change, she needs to find a way to also go back to work, manage stress better, and whether that's changing jobs or, you know, or figuring out a way to change somehow um, the way you're doing your job or the learning techniques for managing stress better. But in addition to getting stressed on the job, she also would eat badly and like throw the whole food plan out the window. Because when you get stressed, people grab, they look for salty food, fat food, fried foods, you know, sugar, you know, all to sort of comfort food and feel better. And so there's some long-term, and so what I wanted to share was that finishing what you start, what I've learned is that um, people with, especially if you think about rheumatoid arthritis or people with severe disease who are on, and a lot of people find me for that, right? I'm not taking, I'm taking care of some people who have very mild symptoms and feel better right away, but I have a lot of really complex um, people with with illnesses and pain and inflammation that's deep and has been going on for years and years and that doesn't you can't just quick fix that away and so what happens is there's sort of a slope right you start getting better and you continue to get better you don't the whole thing doesn't go away in two weeks you have to start the path and then you will continue to improve and slowly get better and better and better. And I have people I've been working with for two years, three years, and they started out in almost a crippled state. And they're, they got felt, felt so much better right away from all the quick start stuff. But then there's a plateau and you have to keep working. And you have to keep working on gut repair. And you have to keep eating healthy food. And you have to keep um, working on stress. And these are all things that will help you continue your slope towards getting better and better and better. And slowly but surely, you will keep getting better. It's sort of like turning, you don't, um, the analogy I use sometimes is you can't just turn around a um, speed, but you, you know, we're on the QE2, we're on a cruise ship, and to come about, you know, the wide turn a cruise ship makes, you know, to come around, it takes a long time to turn in the other direction. It's not like a speedboat that's just going to turn around. So we're like, if you have a, a very significant illness that you've been struggling with for a while, you're like a cruise ship. You're going to come about slowly. And you'll feel better right away starting these functions, uh, like my Heal My Gut program, my autoimmune program that I recommend absolutely and that others recommend as well. But then you need to work on staying with it long-term, finishing what you start.
And I see our 15 minutes is just about up. And I was going to talk about today, and maybe this will just go over into next week, but um, actually next week I want to talk about stress in the gut and stress in general and, you know, and inflammation and how stress and trauma, traumatic stress and traumatic events affects um, affects the body and creates inflammation and talk about some tools for that. But before we get there, the three things I was supplements. I promised last week I would talk about supplements. I'm sorry I got lost in my discussion about finishing what you start because I went to that conference last week and I this past weekend I just came home um, Sunday night and I just started thinking. I was having conversations with some people and it just, you know, I just started thinking about all those quick fixes out there and and um, and that in some ways my, my colleagues and I are doing a disservice to people thinking that they're finished after that. So the long-term supplements that are really good for the gut that I want to share with you are, is and, I, and here are some products I'm going to show you. So this is, oh, I'm sorry, I'm at my window and it looks like there's a little bit of um, shine uh, on this. But this is Glutagenics Powder from Metagenics. Now, I do private label my stuff. I am not a shameless, you know promoter of my own supplements. Um, I only, I private label my supplements for my online programs, but otherwise I just have everybody else's stuff in my store, um, in the office. And my favorite probiotics, um, one of my favorite probiotics, um, that's, that is, is from a company called Claire. Um, Claire Labs is, um, the autism company, you know, they, they started out like the Defeat Autism Now people, were there, you know, uh, the were really um, using all the Claire products, and that's how I learned about them. Um, they're only a probiotic company, you know. They really do probiotics well, and um, this is called Thurbiotic. Actually, this is Thurbiotic Factor Six. This is the hundred billion per capsule one. Um, they also have Thurbiotic Complete, which is really my go-to. It's twenty-five billion. But the thing about probiotics, and maybe we'll just start with probiotics today because um, I see I'm into the question and answer time. Um, the, the two main things I want to tell you about was glutamine and probiotics. Um, glutamine is the powder that you can do plain glutamine powder. Um, Glutagenics has glutamine aloe licorice, so it's really soothing for the stomach as well. I always joke that if I was on a desert island stranded, what would I want to have with me? I'd have, just want to have my glutagenics because gastritis, ir irritated stomach, and acid stomach, you know, all that's, and then is really, this really isn't like magic. But the glutamine that's in it heals the um, the whole intestinal lining for treating leaky gut. I also use plain glutamine powder, actually, just as much as I use glutagenic, but I had glutagenics in the house, so that's the, the jar that I, I grabbed. A teaspoon a day of glutamine powder, long term, a year. If you have bad leaky gut, you need it for at least six months to a year. Teaspoon a day, um, long term. And then in terms of probiotics, maybe we'll save that for another day because I want to get to questions. And, um, so, uh, oh, I see you. Uh, hi, everyone. My, t my team at Blum Center just sent me a hello. Um, so hi, everyone. Um, I have a great team. I have, uh, you know, my other doctors I, and my nurse practitioner and my nutritionists. And we have a whole team of people to help you on site if you want to come and get great functional medicine at Blum Center. But, um, probiotics, the most important thing is broad spectrum, multi-species, um, this one has, you know, the one, Thurbiotic Complete has like 11 or 12 different species. Really, really important to replenish the good bacteria. They, they reduce inflammation. They will help tone your immune system. I leave people on that long term, and, and, and so that's part of the, the long term. So I did want to talk about supplements um, a little bit today. So probiotics and glutamine, if that's all you stay on after you finish your gut healing program, that's a good place to start in terms of finishing what you start. Don't just stop everything and keep going. Okay, so, sorry about that. I went over my, my allotted time, but I got, I'm just so interested in this whole bringing it home, finish what you start, you know, that whole idea, because we work with people for, you know, months after months and years after year. Those quick programs are just not enough. Um, okay, so, uh, so there's a question about magnesium citrate powder um, every night, long term, yeah. So, so here's the, well, let's talk about magnesium. That's such a great question. Thank you for asking that. Um, now, a lot of people have chronic constipation, very, very common. Um, and part of that, I believe, for sure, is diet and flora, and that usually can get 
fixed if you do a quick like gut cleanse like a re that's actually where the quick fix reboot can come in really handy if that's your only gut symptom or your only health issue is some is that you have hard stool you or you run constipated a 10 day sort of the 10 day reboot you know heal my gut program I will pitch my website you know blumhealthmd.com really good for just repairing and rebooting you know the the bowels but um Magnesium is wonderful, and the magnesium works in multiple ways, and it depends on which magnesium you use. Magnesium citrate tends to not get as absorbed into the body, and it, it works very good for loosening, for helping treat constipation. So that's our go-to at Blum Center. We give people mag citrate all the time, one or two tablets at night before bed. Sometimes we use calm powder. Some of you might um, have found that. I think you can even buy that at Whole Foods. It's um, called Calm. And you do a teaspoon at night, and um, and it's mag citrate, and it just brings water into the digestive tract. And most people can wake up the next morning, have a bowel movement, you know, eat breakfast, have a bowel movement, or have a bowel movement before breakfast. Um, but magnesium citrate is sort of our go-to um, to help people start that, because and in addition to help them with constipation. Um, in addition, mag mag citrate or magnesium in general helps the body relax and it's often used to help people have a good night's sleep. Tense muscles, especially for people if you have any muscle pain or you find you have some sort of discomfort in your body that's waking you up or preventing you from having a good night's sleep, magnesium is a wonderful thing to do. That's why Epsom salts are so good. They're magnesium. You know, you soak in the tub is one way if you don't want to swallow the pills and the magnesium gets absorbed beautifully through your skin. Um, the magnesium that we are go to, there's all different kinds of magnesium for different purposes. Um, we tend to use magnesium glycinate for people who have low magnesium or to help them sleep um, because that's a really nice, um, oh look, the sun's coming out in my, I'm at the window in my house. Uh, you can see it sort of brightens for a second. Um, the magnesium uh, glycinate we use um, and then we also use a mixed magnesium with magnesium orotate I believe is in there. Um, for more magnesium blend, depending um, on people want we have capsules and tablets. There's all different kinds of magnesium. But keep in mind, citrate is going to have more of a bowel effect. And the other magnesiums are, because they're bound to an amino acid, so magnesium glycinate is bound to glycine, you, you, it comes into the body and has more of a systemic effect. So that's my little pitch about magnesium. Um, so... So, very good question. So, a question on, I've started your one-month detox program. How many months should I continue to do it? And I appreciate that question because we are talking about finish what you start today, right? And that does lead to the question, how long should I do a program? Huh. That's a really tough question because it's very much personalized to what's going on and how you feel. So, when it comes to detox programs, let's just talk about that for a second in terms of long term. Uh, we have a, for, if, for people who are generally healthy and we're not using detox to treat a health condition per se, we generally recommend, you know, uh, doing a three to four week, like a one month or, you know, or some sort of cleanse or, you know, and actually I have to tell you, we talk about what's the difference between a cleanse and a detox, but using the, the word detox to mean that, um, you're taking supplements that, which is what my detox is, our detox is taking some liver support nutrients, very targeted liver support, which is a protein shake and, and antioxidants and, and herbs and, and nutrients that help the liver do a better job clearing out toxins. And you go on a, on a detox diet at the same time, and the whole goal is to lighten your load of external to toxins you're taking in, as well as um, then taking targeted supplements that are going to bo boost your liver. It's a liver boost. It's a liver tune-up, and you're going to then eliminate a whole bunch of toxins. I believe that you should do that probably once or twice a year. In general, all of us at Blum Center do it a couple times a year. Our nutritionist, Mary Goki, is, uh, runs these fabulous group detox programs where she runs them three times a year, and everyone in the community will show up and do it together, and it's really fun, and, um, and we do them with individuals. And so... Twice a year, you know, and so a month at a time, once or twice a year, because the world is filled with toxins. The epidemic of chronic disease, the epidemics of, of inflammatory disease that we have now, you know, our kids who are like little canaries who the environment is just changing their neurotransmitters, their hormones, 
it's really become a big issue and most people will agree that we're living in this toxic soup and what can we do about it is help our bodies cope with it as best we can in addition to trying to clean up your environment so we definitely give you know help you know guide you and it's really important in the detox guides that we give out you know eat organic when you can you know clean up your toxins as best you can and and even someone like myself I mean I go out to dinner I can't, I eat home, I'm eating as toxin-free as possible, but I travel, I go out to dinner, I have a salad. You can't possibly avoid all toxins, it's not possible. So all you can do is to keep your body doing the best job it can, getting rid of toxins. So that's my long answer to your question, um, a little bit of a long answer, that if you're generally healthy, one month is probably fine, and it's really good to boost your energy, you know, clear up that brain fog, get rid of just some of that sluggishness that you might feel because toxins are accumulating in your body just because we live in this world. However, if you're a person who has an autoimmune disease or um, things like, I don't know, migraine headaches, or you know you have an exposure to a lot of toxins, like you eat a lot of fish or... Um, what are the toxin-related illnesses? I mean, certainly autoimmune disease toxins are a big driver, and I talk about that in my book, The Immune System Recovery Plan. There's a whole section um, dedicated to toxins, and, and especially thyroid people. You know, there's different thyroid antibodies, and the thyroglobulin antibodies are especially sort of associated with toxicity. The thyroid gland, you know, takes up toxins. It takes pesticides and mercury, and I think that's one of the reasons we have such an epidemic of thyroid disease. And so if you have Hashimoto's thyroiditis um, and you think about your history and you know you've been eating a lot of fish or you know you have a lot of pesticide exposure, um, then often I, we will...